Okay, today we're about to do something we haven't done in a long time. We are gonna mill some wood. And a couple different things happened. I thought at one point we were gonna destroy the sawmill just because how massive this log is. One mishap, it falls on it, it breaks it, and we're out like ten, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000. Expensive. Um, I don't know if there's any coming back from that on those sawmills. I don't know, but I'll let you guys know. Everything went smooth and we turned out that possibly could have been a loss if we would have messed it up into a big financial gain for my friend's uncle. I think he uh, came out with about $5,000 worth of lumber. Stay tuned, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hey, if you do, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, we're back at the homestead and uh, my buddy has been wanting to bring over this big walnut tree that his um, stepdad cut down in their yard. We're hoping there's no nails in it. I know how it is whenever you have trees in the yard, especially one this size. This is the biggest tree I've ever attempted to put on our sawmill. Um, but we're getting it all cut uh, to length. Gonna get some knots cut off on it and then we're gonna put it on there and see if the sawmill can handle it. It should, we measured everything. Seems all the measurements come out how we think they need to. So I'm gonna show you guys, big old walnut, 100 year old walnut tree. Let's see what's inside. Yeah, try that. Hold on, Brett. Okay. Keep coming. Keep coming, come on. All right, Let, lower it down some. Don't drop it, lower it. Okay, Low, keep lowering it. We'll, we'll roll it forward. Okay. There you go. Now bump this, when you get back, bump that in toward, towards me. Okay. Okay, this is an absolute mother load of logs for this Norwood. Biggest one I've ever put on there by far. Um, so he, we're gonna do some live edge. He actually does a lot, um, my buddy's um, uncle does a lot of woodworking. This is walnut, he's gonna take it back to his place. He's gonna square it all up, do what he does with cutting boards and all that. Um, but this is out of the yard, so I'm hoping there's no nails in it, I'm hoping. Take it off first, Paulie, and then just let it fall off. Pull and go, and grab it, and put it
He's gonna turn it and put that flat part up against here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So that makes more sense to me. Okay. Can you pinch it higher, Brent? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Right there, um, it may roll. It may roll back towards you, but we'll put them them things on there. Set I'll it down. My, I'll hold my bucket. Okay. Usually we would put this flat piece on the bottom, but since it's wider, we can't. Okay. I mean, I'll see, see if you could tilt. Hold on a second, Brent. Let go of it. Okay. Now, now, there you go. Keep coming. Okay, right there. Hold on. I don't ever do nothing this big. I don't have trees around here that big to build. There's a solution. <laughs> uh, yeah, we could uh, take them up on So they are cutting these about an inch and a half slabs by 10 foot long and they've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten they got about 14 already and they probably got at least four more they're gonna be able to cut um so he's gonna he said he told me he's i'm 80 years old i ain't gonna live much longer this shot last, last me a lifetime this is by far the biggest one we've ever cut on this machine we maxed the machine out for sure i'm just glad it was um the size that it was so we couldn't know this up for him. Look at that. That's that wall. Now look how awesome that was. All right, so it's been a couple days since we started milling on that big walnut. Um, we've, we're down to, I think we got three logs left, one good size one, I'll go over there and show you guys, and then a couple um, smaller ones. Um, but uh, my buddy left his big Kubota skid steer over here. It's like twice the size of mine. It's almost like a D4 dozer. So he left it over for, he's leaving it over for like a week or so. Um, he said I can get some use out of it with the grapple and all that's gonna be, uh, make things handy for me. Uh, Cause I want to clear up some of these brush piles. So earlier I went to get on it to operate it for the first time. And uh, when I turned it on, pushed the log zero button to turn the hydraulics on, I busted a line. So literally within five seconds of me being in there, uh, I busted the iron out, which he said they were already rubbing um, from where this is set up. You can see this one right here is actually ready to bust too. Uh, so my buddy's actually getting two hoses to replace. Um, it was just a matter of time. How it happens to me when the first time I get in there is beyond me. Like literally, 
hydraulic went everywhere um but he's gonna get that fixed so i'm gonna be able to use this grapple um hopefully this week sometime because i want to get some of these brush piles cleaned up cut some firewood up stuff like that i've been i've been wanting to get a grapple for mine just haven't spent the money on it because we're spending other things on the house you guys know how it is um but what i'm going to show you guys right now let's go over and look at the logs um after i show you this we're going to jump on here though because we don't need the hydraulics for the big bucket my bobcat's out at the prop the creek property with the mower on there which we need to get back over here because i got a lot of mowing to do um but um i want to get some stuff done i got this i want to put the bucket on there we're going to go clean up the girls hunting spot real quick back behind the house and we're going to put up the cell cam um, because i know we got some big bucks running back there i know there is but here's the walnut trees we got left that one we won't build the mill that's just but i think we can mill some of this we'll cut some of that off they might build the mill you know a, maybe eight eight foot of that then um i think we'll be able to mill this too it was almost too big look at this though look at that and then uh, we might be able to get something out of that too big old walnut tree to my surprise and thank goodness we did hit it we did not hit any metal i would like to get a little metal detector to scan the logs before we do it and that's what a lot of people do we just haven't done that you know but we have to, we finally got to run the sawmill for the first time since last fall i think or maybe last spring i don't remember when the last time we did it so that gets me that gets me motivated to go to the creek property and get those um sycamore trees that are across the creek get them cut up get them over here since i got the sawmill uh tuned up and ready to go that will make quick work of that and we got some projects we would like to use for um that siding here's the deal though on uh so what's awesome about this project is this walnut tree is that it fell down in a storm at my friend's stepdad's well my they have um my friend's uncle came down um, from wherever he lives and they said he does a lot of woodworking and they surprised him with coming over here and milling this up um, for him to use so he makes cutting boards and all types of other things he told me just the lumber they got already is about five thousand dollars worth of lumber that he would have to purchase i don't know anything about pricing and stuff that's just what he told me but that's about five thousand dollars worth of of lumber and um let them come over and use this they asked me if i want any of it. i said no i don't have any use for it right now i don't have a shop or nothing let him take it all let him have fun and have it for his business um, but i thought that was cool a, a, a storm knocked over a tree and now has provided this man for his business five thousand dollars worth of material which i'm sure he'll turn it into ten thousand or fifteen thousand whatever his price is on things i don't know i don't know how much all that stuff goes for but i know he's gonna he's gonna appreciate it and he said it's probably gonna last him the rest of his life um and he was laughing about it you know but i thought that was pretty neat that they saved that log for him because they hit me up my friend hit me up a while back and wonder if they can come over and mills i said yeah anytime just bring it over and they're waiting for his uncle to come down and um, they surprised him with how cool is that though five thousand dollars worth of lumber in about three hours it's pretty cool so that tells me we should start a sawmill business <laughs> yeah right like i don't have enough stuff going on but i will say this this um this was the biggest one that norwood sawmill that they sold at the time when we bought it a few years ago it's considered an industrial size for people to run their own sawmill business so i mean this is set up for that we can pull to job sites and stuff like that it's just something we've never done um i, I want to get more use out of it for sure um but i'm glad i'm glad i was able to help them out and um, help make that man's uh, day with all that lumber. So let me get the bobcat, or let me get this um, Kubota disconnected without any, throwing any hydraulic fluid everywhere and uh, get the bucket on. And let's go out to the girls' hunting spot. Um, I haven't been out there this year, so let's go take a look at it. I need to go get some rags to clean this window off. The hydraulic fluid shot up pretty good all over the place. So we'll get that cleaned up. So I know you guys have been seeing a lot of content from us doing with deer hunting and, and the girls getting things ready for them and the deer camp. Um, that's just part of it. You guys know we always film what we've got going on. We'll give you guys an update. We haven't got anything else done on the on the siding. Um, Randy got pulled onto another job and I need his help doing this other stuff. I can't, it's not a one-man job. It's definitely a two-man job, but he, he started another um, big job. He should be done this week. So hopefully next week we'll get all the siding done and I'll show you guys that too. Uh, so hope you guys are enjoying the content we are giving you guys okay so it is um 
actually bow season here in Oklahoma, whitetail bow season. And I haven't been out here to this spot behind the house, which is actually kind of a honey hole of ours because it's so close to the house and there's big deer out here. Um, I've been at the creek property trying to get it ready for the youth camp. I've neglected this spot. So today I'm taking some time out of the day to work on this spot. This will be like a quick spot if we can't go out to the creek or something and we're being getting good activity out here, we can come right out of our back, backyard, back door. There's a nap, this keeps won't leave me alone and um, maybe put the girls on some deer. So I do have this gravity fed feeder and it's probably full of wasp. And the wasps come out of there and that has came off. That's probably been like that for four, four or five months. I have no clue. Um, so what I want to do, we, I'm changing things up this year because just by watching the deer activity over the last two years out here, we're kind of set up in the wrong spot. So we've actually killed a couple deer out of the blind right there. I got to get that all cleaned up. I'm moving a blind. I'm going to put a blind back in here because the way the deer are moving, we're actually sitting, sitting right on their highway. And, you know, we didn't realize that at the time, but after what after hunting for two years out here realizing all right i put the, i put the blind in not so good of a spot and i'm going to move it so what i want to do though is hopefully with um, this big kubota i could clear some of this stuff to get the feeder and get everything set up where the deer will come in and uh, we can set off the trail over here uh, 20 or 30 yards and have the girls a good clean shot right into here so I'll set the camera up and um, we'll see what this Kubota could do. Uh, it's like a mini, <laughs> it's like a mini dozer, I'm telling you guys. I think it's gonna do pretty good for what I want. And then once we get the, um, uh, the mower out here on my Bobcat, or even just go pick the mower up and use this, cause I'm gonna have it for, I think he said a week or two, he'll leave it out here. Then we can uh, come out here and mow some stuff and get this spot ready too. You can see the deer blind has got blown away. It was right over there, right in there. And now it's over here. So. Well, when we leave here in a little bit, we'll get all this gathered up and get this place cleaned up. So I want to open this area up right here. I'm gonna go get my smaller bucket that's sturdier than this one because um, I don't want to mess this bucket up um, by pushing stuff over because it's really not made for that as far as the bucket goes. Um, so we'll take a chance on mine and not his. Okay, so right now I'm just trying to clear a few uh, paths, shooting paths, and um, kind of go from there. I'm gonna work on it for a little bit, then I'll show you guys what I get done. And um, I'm just, I just wanted to make a spot where I can move the feeders for the girls and some shooting lanes. And then I'm gonna clear a little, little spot where I'm gonna put a blind for us so we can come um, walk through our backyard and through the woods and get to it without um, jumping any deer or spooking any deer. <coughs> in the morning or evenings. Before we we're walking right through the middle of uh, the woods where we would jump some things like that. Now what I want to do is make where we got easy access that we can sneak in and without being detected. Okay, I got a little area cleared for now. I'm gonna move this feeder, it's a gravity fed feeder out in the middle here. And I have another feeder um, that will throw corn. I'm gonna move over here. <coughs> we're probably gonna abandon the pond area because we had zero luck last year and we went out there several times and we never even seen a doe as far as I can remember um, so I don't know if something's changing if the neighbors are hunting cutting them off over there 
or if the pond build and all the work over there is scared, I don't know. We've got tracks at the pond, but it was just real weird last year. We usually see a lot of deer over there, and last year we didn't see any. We've seen everything right here. So hopefully disturbing it. Uh, the deer are really curious animals as it is, so I think they'll be in here tonight just kind of seeing what's going on and looking for whatever acorns or anything that I got out here. Um, but I'm gonna move this feeder real quick, and uh, I'm gonna put two different kinds of uh, traction out here. Um, one's gonna be like a buck lure, and I got a salt lick I'm gonna put out here, and then I'm gonna get some corn with the other feeder and put it out here. And this will be our main area, main hunting area here at the homestead. So the gravity feeder, um, I've actually got pictures um, a lot of people ask, do they really work? I actually got pictures of bucks getting in here <coughs> and um, eating out of it, as long as this isn't broke. And you always got to be careful of wasp nest. I think we're good. Hopefully it didn't break. I think it just goes back on there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this set up, probably go get the salt licking camera, and then we'll set it up out here and call it good um, today out here until I get my mower. I really need my mower out here to mow all these smaller saplings. And um, I got, I think I'm going to put um, a blind out here and then probably a ladder stand in opposite sides of each other for different wind directions. Um, Cause north wind, south wind really plays an effect in this spot. Got us a little snake over here. Let's see if we can find it. There it is. I'm not real sure what that was. You leave me a comment down below. What kind of snake was that? Okay. So we're in business right here. So I think I'll put um, some of those buck pellets in here. And then I'll put my feeder, another feeder right over here and uh, we'll load it up <coughs> we'll give them choice um, just to keep them around and uh, so i'm gonna go with that salt looking camera and come back out here real quick and set it up all right the trophy rock <clears throat> put it right there i'll take that plastic off okay i'm gonna set my camera up over here facing the feeder I mean, they'll feed it, but maybe they'll hit this um, trophy rock. That is some good stuff. They love it. So we got the camera, the cell cam set up. Now I just gotta fill the feeders up, get the other one out here, and then figure out exactly where I want the blind and the tree stand. And this spot will be ready to go. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video um, of us doing some milling and a little bit of clearing and setting some stuff up for deer season. If you guys did smash that like button for not subscribe, please subscribe. Love you guys. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.